Hello channel friends, this is W Copeland 38 and today on the show I'm bringing you something I've never done before. We're going to do a 3D movie. Yes, I've got my 3D out and it's courtesy of Kershaw. I'm going to bring you my very first 3D knife. Now this knife, if you can't figure it out by now from the way it looks, this is the Kershaw RJ1 Spring Assisted Knife by RJ Martin. It actually has a three-dimensional style handle. Gives the sense of uh, a three-dimensional look. So now I've got my first 3D movie. I'm pretty happy about that. Nah, no, just kidding. It is designed as a three-dimensional look. I'll give you a real close-up here. This is a really great knife. Now I've seen some other videos and they had done the RJ1 and the RJ2 at the same time. Well I've got both but I'm not putting them in the same video because the RJ2 is a completely different knife to me. Uh, it's got a different feel, it weighs different, it does have the same type of tip and it's got the same handle style but that's where the similarities end and I'm going to go over this one with you and then I'll show you in another video the RJ2. Now this RJ1 is a great knife for heavy duty cutting, for uh, work, for doing unboxing, and it's a great EDC knife. And you know from my other videos I like knives that have a capability of having a deep carry. Well from the position of this clip you can have this thing well down in your pocket and no one's gonna know it. Now let's go over some uh, specs for it. The blade length is three and a half inches. It's nice good size. The knife has a closed length of 4.6 so it's a good size knife. It has an overall length of 8.1 inches so it's a good long knife once it's open that's what I like about it it's got a good good size it's a good substantial knife for you but it's not excessively heavy it's 4.6 ounces so it's not like carrying around a brick the blade steel let's see if I can get it to focus here for you there almost there there we go is the black T-I-N-I -I style. It's a flat grind blade. It's got a really nice Tonto tip on it. Let's see if we can keep it in focus here. Here we'll bring it out here a little bit. This, I, I love this T-I-N-I -I coating on them. It makes it a quite durable and it's supposed to resist rust. And So far I haven't had any of mine rust out. I like the belly style on this. It's, it's not fat, but it's not like too skinny. It's got a great spine on it. It's good heavy. Now there's no swage on it. It does use dual thumb studs. There we go. I always like having the thumb studs on the knife. It, you don't always have time to uh, use the flipper or sometimes it's just not convenient and you know how that can be you know sometimes your your hands are just busy with this lightweight design it's easy to carry comes with a lanyard hole it uses torque screws and that's really really good because if you were to have to take it apart to do some thorough cleaning uh, they're readily available nowadays. I remember when Torx first came out and you could hardly ever find them. It's got the G10 handle on it. Makes it nice and light. It's got a nice steel liner. The lockup is courtesy of the uh, always proven and true uh, Kershaw liner lock. That's I've never seen one fail. Not, not myself. It has an open semi-open design for easy cleaning. 
and it feels really solid. Let's talk about balance. Let me get, get it out of here where you can see it. As I've mentioned before, I have average size hands, and you can really get a nice grip on this thing. The flipper acts as a bit of a hilt. You have a nice indent for your index finger, and the way the handle does uh, with this end curve here makes it nice and balanced to put pressure on with your thumb. Now we know that the Tonto blade is primarily a piercing blade, but with the belly like this, with this nice curve, you can use it for cutting meat, vegetables, boxes if you need to, things like that. It's a really good, durable knife. And of course, it's got the Kershaw quality. You know, ever since I've had Kershaw knives, I've been amazed at how well uh, they've done their design work. And uh, the quality that comes from the people that help them do their designs is uh, really, really good. This R.J. Martin, I haven't seen a knife that he's done yet that I haven't liked. He's uh, really gone above and beyond on the uh, type of knives that he designs for them. It's got an excellent, uh, all the way up to a 10 on the cool factor with me. I uh, really enjoy using this knife. I've messed around with it a little bit. I haven't put it to any hard use yet, but I think I will. Uh, some of them I take it easy on because... Uh, they're just kind of for uh, doing the videos and keeping for show. But this one here, this is going to be a nice little workhorse. One good thing, let me show you here real quick. The clip is reversible for lefties, thank goodness. For You can have it tip, tip up and tip down carry. Finally. So that's... Uh, expedient thing to have. Now I don't know exactly how they're going to have it for the lefties here. They say on their uh, advertising it is, but you know, come to look at it, I don't know exactly know how they're going to do it. But they say they can, so I don't see any anything special for doing that. So let, let's scratch the lefties on it. It is designed for a tip up and tip down carry. So Nick's on the lefties. The, they always leave those guys out of the picture. That's that's really unfair. There's a lot of cool people out there that are left-handed. Considering its size, uh, you can't really go wrong. Of course, it's got what they consider the black blade. And this Tonto tip, that that's, that's pretty darn sharp. Let's see if we can get this thing in focus. I want to give you a, a good look at this thing. That is a real nice cutting edge. Of course, you can see the speed safe there. And this handle, I, I know it doesn't really show because it's on video. This is really grippy. This texturing and with that 3D effect, my 3D movie, uh, it's really nice. It's uh, quite comfortable. It's about the best way to put it. It's got this other indent. Of course, it's got the grooves for the uh, liner lock. Now, like anything else, let's see if this uh, bad boy is sharp. So, here's my trusty piece of paper. Oh, that was cool. Give it one more slice here. Didn't even didn't even leave any paper on the blade. That is awesome. That's a very nice cutting blade. So that's going to get a 10 on the score for cutting ability. Now as far as price, it's a pretty good price. It was about $30. Picked it up at Blade HQ. I just found out about these guys uh, through a couple of the channels. And they've got some really excellent prices. And they have knives that are uh, somewhat difficult to find. You might want to check them out, see what you think of them. Well, this is W. Copeland 38 saying, try one of these knives. This is the RJ1. Its number is uh, 1985. And I'll be back with more for you.